Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful spring day in paradise here on this collapsing planet. Uh, that would be a gorgeous Friday morning, March 5th, 2021, and uh, I need to get out and transplant some azalea plants around my around the hip camp. Uh, but before I get out there with my shovel, I need to get my shovel and uh, wade into this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant, where, like I do every Friday, we're going to head over to mongabay.com <clears throat> and see how this planet is, uh, you know, going straight down uh, the tubes. This past week, while we have all been thinking about whatever it is we're thinking about, and uh, I think we might have some hopium in uh, in this week's roundup. I just I just did a quick glance at the headlines and said, "Oh boy, it looks like hopium on the way." So we're gonna they start out down there like they frequently do in the Cerrado of Brazil with this uh, hopium soaked headline the possible meat a Brazilian farmer shows ranching can regenerate the Cerrado yes and so this is <clears throat> what this is is uh, an article uh, essentially on this uh, guy named Alan Savory who's promoted uh, he, uh, the idea of holistic management in rotational grazing. Uh, Alan Savory became famous for his provocative idea that to save the planet from climate change instead of reducing livestock farming, we would have to increase it. And anyway, guys, I don't have time to get into this whole thing. If you're not familiar with, with Alan Savory, uh, I think you can find a bunch of videos on him and his ideas for rotational ranching. And um, you know, I, I'm a little bit on the fence about this. You know, compared to the way we do it now, Obviously, uh, obviously, uh, Alan Savory uh, has a much better way to raise livestock, particularly beef cattle, uh, than the way we're doing it now. But uh, if, if anybody thinks, uh, I, I, surely Manga Bay was being a little bit ironic with their wording of that that we need more we need more livestock on the planet uh, than we have now to save the planet uh, that let's hope Rhett was being ironic but anyway guys I, I got to move on <clears throat> I love it when uh, they ask a question in, uh, in a headline again they're looking at <clears throat> The Sumatran rhino. We've they've been talking a lot about the Sumatran rhino, which is down to less than 80 individuals left on the planet. I mean, they're already functionally extinct. I think that is the term, functionally extinct. Uh, so they are asking the question: doomed or viable? Is the Sumatran rhino doomed or is it viable? The answer to the question is the Sumatran rhino is doomed. This is the Sumatran rhino and every other rhino on this planet. Uh, you know this big debate whether uh, humans need to step in and, and start, uh, you know, basically just putting all these 80 rhinos in captivity and doing this artificial insemination and all of this crap. 
you, you know, it's kind of like the Alan Savory thing. Uh, sure, uh, I, I guess to keep this population of 70 or 80 rhinos uh, kicking the can down the road for a few more years by essentially farming them in zoos, uh, yeah, is that better? Than, uh, than letting them go completely extinct. Uh, again, uh, you know, th this is just, it's just what environmental stories, uh, you know, positive environmental news and, and, and success stories is looking like, that we're so desperate to uh, find any ray of hopium in, in this absolutely hopeless situation. Sumatran rhinos are already doomed. Uh, they, you know, whether there's 80 or 8, uh, anyway. Uh, yep. What is the uh, next debate? Well, here you go. This gets right to the end. There are no silver bullets in conservation. This is an interview with Jessica Swiden, uh, the head of some group called Synchronicity Earth. Yes. Uh, I, I love this. If it were easy, Problems like the extinction crisis, the human-wildlife conflict, overexploitation of forests and oceans, and habitat degradation and loss would be resolved already. Yes, uh, do you think so? Uh, okay. Did you realize that saving Africa's biodiversity is a challenging but urgent necessity. Yes, saving Africa's biodiversity is challenging. Thank you for pointing this out. I never would have would have uh, would have realized that. Oh, good Lord! All right. I like this quote. This might be uh, my, my title quote. We're going to go over to the Philippines. The river will bleed red. I guess they're talking about bleed red with blood. For more than five decades, indigenous communities in the northern Philippines have pushed back against the planned construction of hydropower dams on the Chico River system. The river is of great importance to indigenous communities who call it their, quote, river of life and have depended on it, on, on it for generations. Um, they're looking uh, at two of these dams have been proposed in some form or another since the 1970s, but, and they've been, you know, been fought against, but now are being backed by corporations created by indigenous groups, causing divisions among communities. Critics of the dams have questioned the indigenous consent process a requirement uh, for a project on tri tribal lands alleging that some of the community support was obtained through bribery. And this is actually, uh, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. So this is their video of the week, if you want to see the video on this. But, but what this is, you know, I've been talking about this for years. This is all about the myth of the, of the noble savage, you know, where I spent uh, several months 
uh, down there in the Peruvian Amazon rainforest, spending a lot of time and in, in, in getting to know these, uh, the, these Amazon Indians, or in this case, these Philippine, you, you know what I'm saying, these indigenous tribes. And, and, and guys, uh, I, I, when, when I got down there, I was suffering the little lefty, greeny myth of the noble savage. The, these indigenous communities are like any other humans. Okay? Some of them are, uh, are, are defenders uh, of this planet. And some others, and I would say the majority of the ones they met, they want the same thing that you and I want. You know, if, if you lived like, like these people that I saw uh, down there in the Peruvian Amazon, you would be doing anything you could. Uh, you know, to, to get out of that grinding poverty. You know, this is why, you know, looking at those gold mine, those gold miners down there in the Mother of God River or uh, on this river, the Chico River. Uh, who do you think it is, it is actually on the ground uh, running those, uh, those mines and pouring mercury in the water? Who do you think is actually manning the chainsaws on the ground. I anyway, uh, I'm sure I've already got myself in trouble talking about the myth of the noble savage. That is exactly what has happened. That this indigenous community support was obtained through bribery. Did, did, have you forgotten that they bought Manhattan, what was it, for $24 worth of beads? <clears throat> humans are humans, okay? All of this crap. Uh, anyway, let's go over to Cambodia where we find a disgrace. Luxury housing plans threaten Cambodia's Bokor National Park. Bokor National Park sits on the southern coast of Cambodia and is a refuge for many threatened plants and animals as well as a popular tourist site. Yes, but Bokor's habitat is under threat from the development of luxury residential estates that are planned to occupy 19,000 hectares, that's about 50,000 acres, inside the national park. 50,000 acres uh, of a national park uh, being turned into a high-end subdivision. Uh, oh, good Lord. Uh, anyway, guys. I'm not even going after after that story I just had, I, 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 I can barely get this uh, <clears throat> headline out of my mouth. Conservation would be more effective with more indigenous leadership. Yes. Uh, anyway, okay. From uh, the myth of the noble savage <clears throat> to restoring peatlands. Yes. Uh, over a million hectares, that's over two and a half million acres of carbon-rich peatlands have burned in, burned in Indonesia in 2019 alone. Uh, to understand what is being done to restore peatlands, we speak with the deputy head of the 
uh, of the, I guess, Indonesian National Peatland Restoration Agency. There is a uh, there, there there is another oxymoron for the uh, 20th century. That must have been a short interview. What is being done to restore the burned out peatlands of Indonesia? Okay, I was just talking about these uh, these gold mines down there in the Amazon, where you know, two, in two thousand nine, uh, I I personally visited uh, these gold mines. Just you know, looking at these uh, these these indigenous people and whoever just working. In, in absolute horrific poverty uh, down there, basically slave-like conditions, uh, literally destroying the the heart of the Mother of God River in the middle of uh, the Amaracari Indigenous Reserve in Peru, and here we are, twelve years later persistence of slave labor exposes uh, lawlessness of Amazon gold mines, a notorious mining family continued to be awarded permits and lay claims to land in the Brazilian Amazon after being busted for enslaving workers in a 2018 raid. Uh... You know, uh, even after the first raid and Nunez's inclusion on a blacklist of known enslavers, she and her children are still able to apply for and obtain permits from the National Mining Agency. And this is, uh, this is, uh, Uh, this is legal mining. Uh, anyway, okay, let's go back to Indonesia, where we see the uh, the the shocking headline: Indonesian governor's arrest and road project points to more tainted contracts. Indonesian anti-graft investigators last week arrested Nurdin Abdullah, the governor of South Sulawesi province, for alleged corruption in an upcoming road project in his province. It is. They have charged them with taking bribes to grant the road building contracts to a local developer. Do you think so? Uh, you will not believe this, guys, but corruption in infrastructure projects is common in Indonesia. Yes, with local leaders like governors and district chiefs channeling the money back and using it to fund their re-election campaigns. There you go. All right, what's going on with Facebook this week? Hmm, Facebook is enabling Amazon land grabbing and deforestation finds investigation. Uh, this is from the BBC uh, in a new TV documentary. I have to check this out. Penetrated deep within criminal networks, illegally selling and deforesting conservation lands even within an indigenous reserve. Yes. In a new twist to this old game, some land grabbers are posting the plots they are selling on Facebook, a practice likely to bring international attention and outrage. No, it's likely to bring international attention and buying of these uh, of these lands. Uh, the sellers may have moved to using Facebook 
ads to sell their, you know, their Ill- the land they don't even own because the lawbreakers say they have virtually no fear of prosecution from Brazilian President Jair or Bozo Nero. Uh, his administration has gutted and defunded the nation's environmental regulatory protection and enforcement agencies. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right. Anyway, guys, there is a lot on this list. Uh, all right, did you realize that Columbia's national parks are at a crossroads? Yes, as Columbia's national parks face brutal deforestation, a firestorm of criticism has erupted over the country's newly appointed director of national parks, Orlando Milano, who has no experience uh, in environmental affairs. Uh, environmentalists worry that under Molano's oversight, the development of infrastructure inside, you know, Columbia's national parks could take precedence, precedence over the conservation of nature in a country where corruption is rampant. Uh, do you think so? Moving on. We're going to go over to Liberia, which I'm pretty sure is in sub-Saharan Africa. Gee, imagine this headline. Review finds palm oil firm cleared carbon-rich Liberian forest. Yes. The largest investor in Golden Verulium is Singapore-based Golden Agri Resources. Uh, what are they up to? Uh, this new uh, investigation has found that this one firm has cleared more than 1,000 hectares, otherwise known as 2,500 acres of carbon-rich forest in Liberia's remote southeast. And, uh, you know, this is just looking at one palm oil company as, you know, uh, sub-Saharan Africa is going to be the, the newest target of, uh, of these palm oil guys. Oh, boy. Uh... Did you realize that the singing apes of Sumatra need rescuing too? Do not forget about gibbons. All of the focus, you know, on uh, on orangutans, but of course gibbons are also uh, on the same chopping block. Uh, gibbons are crucial for the health of the forest ecosystem. But the illegal trade in gibbons for pets across Sumatra has to be taken as seriously as the trade in orangutans is. Uh, there you go. Say goodbye to the gibbons. Uh, all right, they now have the technology to see through clouds to detect deforestation in real time. Uh, you know, because a lot of this, uh, you know, about how these deforestation rates have been so underreported, it, it, it's hard to get a picture of these, uh, uh, of what's going on on the ground in real time when if the satellite passes over and it's a cloudy day, as it tends to be in the Amazon rainforest. So, but now I guess we can see through those clouds to see how screwed we really are. All right. From that technology 
to how technology can help us achieve at least 30% ocean protection. Yes. Anyway, more eyes in the sky. Okay. So they're now tallying up how many environmental defenders were killed on the planet in 2020? So far, the tally stands at 331 environmental defenders, but of course, the number, it will never be known. Uh, take a wild guess, what country uh, has over half of those murdered environmentalists at 177 taking the number one spot on the planet would be we've just taught we've mentioned the country just a few minutes ago that would be Colombia takes top honors for murdering anybody trying to stay uh, go up against the planet eaters. This next headline is so full of shit. I am not going to insult my intelligence or yours by even reading it. Uh, You know, I mean, I love Rhett Butler. Okay, this man, Rhett Butler, has done more to chronicle the collapse of this planet over the last 20 years than any other man on the planet. But, uh, you know, his propensity for hopium, sometimes it, it really makes me want to reach through this camera and slap him. Rhett, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Okay. We attack. Yes. Uh, We're going to attack the palm oil industry. Yes, we, I'm sure we are. Indonesia. Oh, this is attacking people who attack the palm oil industry. Indonesia and Malaysia plan to mount a joint offensive to shore up the palm oil industry against criticism of deforestation and conflicts associated with the production of the commodity. The leaders of the two countries allege that the EU is discriminating to protect its own vegetable oil producers. Yes. All right, the palm oil wars heat up. Uh, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to skip over the hopium. Uh, what's going on with Bolivia's jaguars? Chinese target Bolivia's jaguars in search for American tiger parts. Oh, good Lord. Yep. An influx of Chinese investment into infrastructure projects in Bolivia in recent years has coincided with a rise in poaching with traffickers targeting jaguars as a replacement for nearly depleted tiger populations back in Asia. The American tiger. Oh, good Lord, guys. This just goes on and on. I need to see where I am into this. I am halfway through this list, and I am already up to 30 minutes. And... Uh, dog is barking and I am talking to myself so let's just run down the headlines real quick Amazon tribes on the edge Uh, here is an East African oil pipeline Uh, here is let's go over to Papua New Guinea 
Papua deforestation highlights eastward shift of Indonesia forest clearing. Uh, to fight climate change, save the whales. Yes. Uh, here is the Sri Lankan minister, I guess environment minister, being held liable for deforestation. Uh, how about the wild idea of declaring key ocean habitats off limits to human activities to protect biodiversity. Uh, we just talked about Bolivian uh, jaguars. Here is jaguars in Suriname's protected parks remain vulnerable to poaching. Yes, you will not believe that the C word has made it easier for poachers to kill jaguars inside Suriname's national parks. Another article about how orangutans are screwed. Uh, and I don't believe it after all of this uh, hopium uh, about technology saving the planet they wind up with the perils of relying on high tech in a warmer world. Anyway guys, uh, I have got to wrap this up because it is a gorgeous day and I've been talking to myself for the last 20 minutes and uh, I gotta go plant some azaleas and take the little dog on a walk on this absolutely gorgeous day in paradise. Bye guys.